Can we begin tonight with those new images and new reporting here inside that horrific terror attack, multiple churches and hotels on Easter Sunday. The death toll is simply staggering tonight. Nearly 300 dead, and there are several Americans among the dead, including a fifth grader. Just today, another explosion, a van bursting into flames near one of those devastated churches. Sri Lankan TV showing this surveillance video tonight, a man with a heavy backpack there, walking along a crowd of churchgoers seen on a church camera suddenly disappearing into that crowd. Among the Americans, I mentioned that 11-year-old boy who went to school in Washington, D.C. Another bomber waiting in line for brunch at a hotel. And tonight we learned there were at least three warnings that there were possible plans for a terror attack underway. So why wasn't there more security? ABC's James Longman is in Sri Lanka, leading us off tonight. Tonight, new panic on the streets of Sri Lanka's capital city. Police eyeing this white van when all of a sudden... Soldiers scatter. The neighborhood descends into chaos yards from where we are. A huge explosion just went off just around that corner there. As soon as it did, as soon as it did, buildings around here, windows shattered. Huge cream went up from the crowd over there. You can see them running towards our position here where we are now. Police on high alert. We don't know what it was, whether or not it was a police detonation, but that was absolutely terrifying. Terrified and bewildered, as tonight we learn that intelligence services ignored repeated warnings of imminent terrorist attacks they first received weeks ago. Then, on Easter morning, one after another, the suicide bombs went off. This dashcam video captures the first explosion at St Anthony's Catholic Church. It was 8.45 a.m., the clock now frozen in time. Around that same time, a man with a backpack seen on security cameras approaching St. Sebastian's Church in nearby Nagumbo. Investigators poring over these images broadcast on Sri Lankan TV, the man weaving through the crowd. Another camera inside the church showing him pass behind the worshippers. He's reportedly one of the bombers. And moments later, the weapon detonates. In the aftermath, the roof completely blown off. Where the faithful once knelt, only glass and debris. A celebration of new life now ravaged by death. But the attack's far from over. In the next 15 minutes, suicide terrorists strike three hotels popular with Western tourists. One killer even waiting in line at an Easter brunch buffet before detonating his explosive. On the other side of the country, another church becomes a target. Later in the day, another hotel. 500 injured, victims rush to hospitals. Outside St. Anthony's, bodies draped in white cloth, nearly 300 killed in these attacks, including at least four Americans. Dieter Kowalski of Colorado, who was here on a business trip, and 11-year-old Kieran Schafritz de Zoyza, who was to start seventh grade at Sidwell Friends in Washington, D.C., his father remembering his son. A brilliant mind who was going to be a neuroscientist and... And now he he's, won't make it to his 12th, his 12th birthday. 24 people are under arrest. Soldiers scaled the walls of this apartment building where they believe the attacks were planned. Moments later, another explosion. Three officers killed. Another very tense day there. James Longman joins us live tonight from Sri Lanka. And James, this evening, authorities are now pointing to a local Islamist extremist group for the attacks. But as you reported there, authorities were warned 10 days before the attacks, and people all over the world are asking, why wasn't there more security? Yeah, that's right. People here are astounded at that, David. And authorities say this group must have had help from abroad. Such was the level of sophistication and coordination of these attacks. It's possible they were inspired by ISIS, but the big question, was ISIS involved in carrying them out?